I come from a generation of Jews who assumed that synagogue worship consisted largely of middle-aged ladies with badly dyed blue hair standing outside the synagogue and almost kissing each other on the cheek while saying, lovely to see you too, dear. Now, concluding that this was the sum total of Judaism and finding that this particular mode of worship somewhat lacking, large numbers of my generation hightailed it off to the Himalayas where they are currently watching their navels and waiting for something to happen. Well, I have news for them. Nothing happens when you watch your navel except getting a stiff neck. Then again, we always were a stiff-necked people. About those blue-haired ladies, though, they made a mistake. They failed to notice that lying dormant under those blue rinses was a kind of spirituality about which we could not even guess. How many jokes, how many Jewish jokes, start with the phrase, eat, he never eats? The caricature Jewish mother complains continually that her offspring are dying of hunger, in spite of the fact that their daily calorie intake would support a thoroughbred racehorse. Behind every joke, however, there lies a truth. It may be a distorted truth, but a truth nevertheless. Judaism is unique in that it views the body neither as an enemy nor as a bacchanalian banquet, but rather as a resource. The body is not only capable of spiritual elevation, but it's created for this purpose. The body's deepest satisfaction comes from being correctly used in the service of the soul. In this week's Torah portion, God says to Moshe, Speak to the entire assembly of the children of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, Hashem, your God, am holy. Since God instructed Moshe to speak to the entire assembly, we know that this commandment was to be spoken in public to all the Jewish people together, not just to Moshe or to Aaron and Moshe. Why? What is it about the command to be holy that requires that it be communicated to everybody together? The answer is, is that the holiness that the Torah seeks from us is not a holiness of separation, denial, monasticism, and seclusion. Rather, the Torah is a Torah of holiness that's to be lived in an assembly, a holiness where the body is elevated by the soul and where its greatest potential is only realized in our interaction with our fellow human beings.